What's up? He thinks he knows what's up. <laughs> you did not plan that, or did you? I 100% planned it. I knew we were going to talk about... No, you didn't. Welcome to another Hi. Tech Tuesday. Today, we're talking about the most important topic on the internet, which is... Why is everybody hawking their red Komodos? Why is everyone selling them, Charles? Why? I don't know. I can tell you, because everybody who bought this, not really my, I was gonna say including myself, because I was coming from the DSLR world, mm. but I have the cinema background on set, so I kind of knew what to expect, but I believe everybody bought this camera who was shooting on a high-end DSLR, wanting to jump into that cinematic, getting that like red airy look. Well, it's because it's a red. And it's right? affordable. It was the very first affordable red camera that came out. And when I say affordable, it was uh, sub $10,000 for a cinema camera. Yep, and you could run PL lenses on it. And then that got everyone's attention and like companies like DZO started blowing up where kids were throwing like a, something like this on here. And then it was like, wait, everybody started running into the same issue. And they realized you have videographers and you have filmmakers. And a lot of videographers came from the world of a DSLR, whereas one man band, they're on a shotgun mic, run and gun, bop, bop, bop. I have good sound, good video. Auto focus. Auto focus, throw it in project. Here's a quick edit, boom. You like, can switch between, oh, I need to take a picture. Yep. To like, oh, now we're filming 4K. Shooting events to kind of like an all-in-one like shooter. Uh, people are coming from that world and they're like, I want to become a cinematographer. And they realize really quickly that this is not a one man band camera. Yeah, I'd say it's more of like, oh, all of a sudden I'm getting away from like Sony's and the Canon's and now I can afford a, a red, which, you know, for most videographers, like the cost of a red has been unobtainable. Yeah, you're you know, 30 to 100 grand. Yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden they came out with a $6,000 camera. I can't remember how much. Yeah, I think for the camera. body itself is it like just the body, grand. six grand. And all of a sudden everybody's like, oh my gosh, yep. I, I can afford that. And it's a red and I want it. And then they realized really quickly that on cinema cameras, like we use in real movies, is there's all these accessories and then there's all these add-ons. And then there's so many things that you need to make this camera work properly, as well as so many people. Um, this doesn't have the technology that a DSLR has where you can just shoot. And I'm not saying technology as in a DSLR is better. This has different technology. And so you need a, you need a grip and lighting team. You need a first AC. You need equipment that can handle it. You can't throw this setup, throw it on a Ronin, and just go run around and shoot. I mean, you could, but you need a lot of accessories, and there's some people that... Well, you need a, you need a follow focus. You need wireless transmitters, you, you know... All the monitors, you yeah. need all those things for making movies. It's not this videographer where you can throw this on there and hit autofocus and just run around and film stuff all day long. This, yes, it has autofocus, but it's not anywhere near this or like a Sony's autofocus capabilities. And coloring red raw footage is a lot different than coloring Canon and Sony footage. So I think a lot of people, they got this camera, they built it out as like a one man band setup. They ran around and shot a bunch of stuff because it does have an autofocus feature. They did kind of sell it as that, but it was not made for that. Red came out with this camera to literally be thrown around. This camera is meant to break. Crash cam. They built this as a crash cam. That's yeah. why it's small. That's why there's limited options. Like Jared literally said, this is the crash cam. Um, do we see new versions of the Komodo coming out? Knowing Jared and knowing Red, I could definitely see a, maybe like a 8K, maybe a little bit bigger with more variety, maybe a side screen, maybe? I don't version? know, that's a good question. I don't know. Because that's kind of getting into the V-Raptor. And the price point of a V-Raptor is like 35K. Yeah. And that's decently affordable. So it's like, it'll be interesting. But I think if you're seeing a lot of Komodos on the internet, the main reason is it's not because it's a bad camera. It just has its own purpose. Um, we shoot a lot of stuff. We shot Netflix stuff. We've shot a lot of things on this camera. So they definitely hold their own. They have their own purpose. Um, yeah, it's just, it's more geared towards the filmmaker 
which always red has always been geared towards filmmaking yeah. and high-end commercials as opposed to you know run and gun style videographer one-man band kind of stuff yep you can do it yes is it harder than like a canon or a sony yes because it's made for making movies so um that is the red komodo definitely a huge tool in our kit here at happy rabbit uh i mean if everyone's hawking them we may find ourselves with a few more in house i don't yeah. know uh we'll see what red has to offer because a lot of new things dropping on the market so uh we're excited a lot more reviews coming um a lot more topics coming so if you guys have anything you want us to talk about or review please leave it in the comments we'd love nothing more than to answer all your guys questions and then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you don't or haven't already and we appreciate uh, it. make sure you send charles all your fan mail he really loves that yeah my email's at the bottom and here's his address and social security <laughs> all right peace out guys see you guys